What is up guys, Tim Murray here. First of all, I want to apologise for not uploading much over the past year. For those of you that follow me on my Instagram, where I'm most active, you'll already know that this is because I'm at college. I'm studying for an audio engineering degree, and I still have two years left, but in the next two years I'll be trying my best to post more content for you all. I have a few original electronic songs that I should be posting soon, along with a few more ideas that I've planned. That being said, if there's anything that you want to see from this channel, please suggest it in the comments section or on my social media pages. Now with all of that out of the way, let's learn how to make a visualizer for your launchpad. The visualizer can be used in multiple ways, and I see it as a way of keeping launchpad displays interesting when you're not using the unit itself, and I see it as a nice little trick for live sets. For this visualizer, you'll need to have Ableton Live, Max for Live, and of course, a pad controller with light feedback like a launchpad, MIDI fighter, or an Ableton push. Today I'll be using my Launchpad Pro, but the setup is basically the same for any controller. The process for this effect can be split up into four parts. Input signal, crossover, control data, and light feedback. So for this project, we need either an audio track or a MIDI track with an instrument on it, a MIDI track for light feedback, and a return track for our crossover. The audio track is of course your input signal, and this is what will show up on the visualizer. You can have multiple tracks for the input signal, and it will still work, but to keep it simple I will only be using one input for this tutorial. I have loaded in an unreleased track of mine as an example. Now I will move on to the crossover. The crossover is to be made in a return track, and this is so you can send audio from the input tracks via the auxiliaries. Before we start the crossover, mute the return track. This is so the input audio doesn't get doubled up through the return track. Otherwise, the output signal is louder, has phase issues, and generally sounds like shit. And we don't want that. Because this part takes a little while to create, here is one I prepared earlier, and I'll explain what it does. This is the part that splits the signal into 8 different bands. Of course, each band of the visualizer is a different frequency range, so we have to make each chain into different frequency bands. This is done by using the EQ8 effect and the 48dB per octave low cut and high cut filters. I started at 200Hz, and then multiplied the frequency by 2 to get the crossover point for the next band. This gives you the crossover points of 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, and 12800Hz. So if the previous band had a high cut at 200Hz, that would be the low cut point for the next band, and then the high cut for that band will be that frequency times 2. This gives us an even spread between the bands, which can be seen when cycling through the different chains. The lowest and highest bands have their ends left open, and that is just so the signal is represented as it is heard. You can always apply a low cut filter on the lowest band if your sub frequencies are interfering with it too much. I did this because I found that the lowest band was maxing out too much. The next effect in each chain of the crossover is the reason you need Max for Live, the envelope follower. What this does is essentially turn the incoming signal of each chain into control data. The higher the volume of the incoming signal, the higher the value is. This is essentially the same concept as sidechain compression, except instead of adjusting the volume of a targeted audio track, it's allowing you to control MIDI data, making this possible. I also have macro controls for the rise, fall, and gain controls on each envelope follower. This is the same as attack, release, and gain on a compressor. While you don't need to do this step, it helps a lot when adjusting things later on, so I would highly recommend you do it now. I will leave the crossover there for now, and move on to the light feedback part. Firstly, set the output of the MIDI track to your device. Mine is set to Launchpad Pro, and then to Channel 6, which is the channel for light feedback on the unit. Then in the MIDI track, create a new clip in the session view. This clip can be any length, so just leave it at one bar long. Also, make sure that the clip is set to loop, as we don't want to have to keep triggering this manually. All that needs to be in this clip is a single note at C1, with a velocity of 127. So, double click here, drag the velocity up, and then click on the legato button. The legato button will make the note extend to the end of the bar. You're probably wondering why we need this, and because my metaphors are so on point, this setup is a lighter. The input signal is the gas, and if you want the flame, or light feedback in this case, you will need something to ignite the gas, aka a flint. This clip is the flint. When this clip is triggered, we can add MIDI effects to the light, which will later be affected by the envelope followers, resulting in a beautiful visualizer. What does it look like now? A single brown light. Beautiful. This is where we are going to have to do a little work with MIDI effects. First in the chain will be an arpeggiator effect. This will be what refreshes the visualizer, so whatever the rate is set to will be your refresh rate. I went with 1 over 64 so that it still refreshes at a nice rate, but it doesn't use up too many resources. That is all that needs to be changed in the arpeggiator. Next, put a note length effect after the arpeggiator. This will create smooth transitions between the lights so that they don't flash. Some of you might be wondering why I didn't just use the gate control on the arpeggiator for this. 
All I can say is, don't use the gate effect when working with lights, as it can sometimes be buggy and make your lights lag. Using a note length effect avoids this, so keep the gate control on the arpeggiator at 50%. Set the note length as low as you can before the lights start to flash a lot, which is around 32 milliseconds for me. Now we can actually start working on the visualizer part. So create a MIDI effect rack and name it Visualizer. Then drop another MIDI effect rack inside the first rack. Label this chain Band 1. This is going to be the first column or band in the visualizer. In the Band 1 rack, drag a pitch effect and a velocity effect into the chain. This is the information for the first light in the column. So for this light, I scrubbed through the velocity values to find the color I was looking for, which was blue. Now that that is done, click on the Chain Select Editor button here. Because we want this light to remain on, even if there is a higher button lit, the Chain Select range will be set from 0 to 7. Now we need to macro assign the Chain Selector to Macro 1. We can do this by clicking the Map button here, and then clicking this big green bar here, and then assigning it to this macro. While we are still in macro assign mode, change the high value from 127 to 7, as the highest value in this chain is 7. We can now exit out of the macro control mode by clicking the Map button again. Now that we have completed one button, we can now duplicate this chain seven times. Make it so that the pitch effect in each chain goes up in multiples of four. This is so each light is on a new row. While you're at it, you can also change the color for each light step by changing the velocity value. So I made three of the steps white and the top one red. In the chain selector editor window, make it so that the minimum values increase by one point for each step. This is so the higher the macro one control is, the more lights will be displayed. We have now set up one band. Now we can go back to the Visualizer MIDI effect rack and duplicate the band 1 chain 7 times, labeling the new chains bank 2 through to bank 8. In each duplicated band, we will need to place a pitch effect before the second MIDI effect rack. In bank 2, set it to plus 1, bank 3 to plus 2, bank 4 to plus 3, bank 5 to plus 32, bank 6 to plus 33, bank 7 to plus 34, and bank 8 to plus 35. This will move the columns across all of the other columns on the launch pad. Now that we have done that, click on Band 1. Now right-click the Macro 1 control and assign it to Macro 1 on the Visualizer MIDI effect rack. Do this for all of the other bands, but assign each chain selector macro to the macro number that corresponds to the band number. So for example, Bank 5's Macro 1 will get assigned to Macro 5 on the Visualizer MIDI effect rack. Now in order for the visualizer to react to the audio input, we need to pair the 8 envelope followers in the crossover section with the 8 chain selector macros we just assigned. Do this by clicking Map on the lowest crossover band's envelope follower and then navigating over to the MIDI track and clicking on Macro 1. The second bank's envelope follower gets assigned to Macro 2, and vice versa. Once all of this is done, trigger your flint clip and play your input audio and you should begin to see a little movement in the lights. The visualizer is now complete. Now this is where you can go back to your crossover section to adjust and fine tune your rise, fall and gain macros you made earlier. I also added another note length effect at the very end of the MIDI track with a length of 70 milliseconds. This is just to smooth out the lights even more. You can also now assign different controls to a rotary encoder controller like the DJ Tech Tools MIDI Fighter Twister. I have it so that I can control the amount of signal that gets sent to the crossover and the volume of each track by using the top encoders. I have also set one of the encoders to control the filter frequency of a bandpass filter and to activate and deactivate the effect when the encoder is pressed. This is an easy way to show that the visualizer is indeed working properly. So thanks for watching guys, this did take a while to work out and polish for you guys, so liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already is greatly appreciated. Like I said in the intro, be sure to comment your suggestions for future content. I'm open to any suggestions and will reply to them as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching. Wait, hang on, that's Vsauce's outro, I can't really do that. Um, and as always, have a wonderful day. Timmy out. Amazing.